in the red bucket. It is depressing to read that the businessman Kudakwashita Gray who runs Sakunda Holdings and gets government tenders to run Command Agriculture has been buying cars for the first lady and the two second ladies, the wives of the two vice presidents, and indeed buying cars for the president and the vice presidents themselves. He bought Lexuses. One Lexus is worth 130,000 US dollars. That is before you pay customs duty. Multiply that by two. That is 260,000 US dollars. Multiply that by 10 cars. That's 2.6 million. Now, let me give you a bit of context. 2.6 million would run Parrenyatko hospitals for three whole months. And Parrenyatko hospital has been closed for four months. Command Agriculture is meant to give the nation or was meant to give the nation food security. Today, the granaries are empty. Today, the same men who are driving Lexus and Land Cruises are going cap in hand to Western countries begging for food aid. This is why I've always said that corruption is the bedrock of our suffering in this country. It has nothing to do with sanctions. Now, I want you to take a look at this school. This school is in Mzarabani, in Mount Darwin. This is where kids are going to get their education. These cars that were bought by Kudakwashi Tagure are just one of many cars that are being bought for these men and their wives. They have brought down the state to its knees. Take a look at this car. It was brought in by one of the very close members of parliament to the president, Mayor Ajika Jena. It's worth about 500,000 US dollars. That would run Parrenyatwa Hospital for a whole month. And yet the guy did not pay even taxes. And it is the grandmothers who continue to suffer in Gruwe, in Dotito, in Murewa, in Dabazinduna, Better must come. Nice one, guys. Next time I come, you're gonna dance for me. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. Next time I come. Huh? What's your name? My name is Ryan. Ryan who? Ryan Guzima. Ryan Guzima. Yes. What do you do, Ryan? How old are you? I'm, I'm, I'm 10. I'm 10, 11. 10, 11 years old? Yeah. Okay. What's your favorite sport? My favorite sport is squash, reading, and TV. Squash, reading, and TV? Yeah. How good are you at squash? Squash, I'm number, two, number one in Zim, then number, number two in Arari. So that's number one in Zimbabwe, really? Mm. Have you played some international tournaments? Yes, I've came. I went last year. I went to George to, to South Africa, and I played under under 11s and I lost four 
and they lost four out of seven. Okay, so yeah. in, in Africa, are you number one or number top ten? In, in Africa, uh -huh. number four. Number four in Africa? Yes. Oh, so you must be quite good in squash. Yes. So when do you find time to practice? Mm, I find time to, to practice, mm, like, so past six. Uh-huh. Uh, past six. You then wake we... up half past six in the morning to play squash? Yes. Uh-huh, and then? Then if I finish playing squash... How long do you play read. squash for at half past six in the morning? I play um, squash in the morning for an hour and 30 minutes. You and your dad? Yes, training. And your dad's good, huh? Yes. So this is Ryan's dad? Yes, this is Ryan's is, dad. This is Lantern, right? Yeah, Lantern Guizima. Lantern Guizima. Yeah. Um, What's your long-term vision for your son? Uh, I can see he's going to go overseas in the next maybe three, five years. Okay. Yeah, in this squash. How do you manage to get him up so early in the morning? How do you discipline the guy? Because most children can't get up at five in the morning to go and go play sport. Oh, he just follows his father. <laughs> he follows you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I do that every day in the morning. Uh -huh. training routine. Your training routine? Yeah. Okay. How's your squash game at the moment? Where are you ranked in uh, uh, Zimbabwe? I'm in the top ten. Okay. But right now, his age is catching up with me. I'm getting older. <laughs> uh -huh. How old are you, if you don't mind telling the camera? I'm 42 years old. 42, yeah, you're in shape yeah. for 42-year-old. Look at that. Lean. Yeah. Lean. Yeah. Lean. So you play uh, squash with your son in the morning, right? Yes. Before. And then uh, after that, when do you get to do your practice? Uh, I, I normally do my practice at the same time with him. Okay. So I'll be doing my basic drills, drive, drive. Oh, you, so, you, so you don't just play a game, you do actual drilling and shots and stuff? Oh yes, that's what I do. Games I normally play when I'm playing my friends. Okay, is he beating you yet? Has he beaten you yet, Ryan? Uh, not yet. I think I'll give him three years to beat me. <laughs> yeah. Lantern, yes. so you finally managed to get your son to stri into striking position. Oh, yeah, we managed. Managed? Yeah. So he's now uh, playing in England yes, and schooling in England? Yes, he's at Wycliffe. At? And supporting me. Okay, okay, okay. You've done very well with him, huh? How old is he now? He's now 14 years old. 14 years old? Yes. At what age did you start? Five years old? Oh, yes, starting playing, he started at five years. Yeah, when he was very small. Okay. Yeah. And now 14. 14, yeah. How's he doing competitively over there? Uh, he's doing so well. Since he went there, he won five titles. Yeah. Yeah, he won the Hungarian Open. Hungarian Open? Yes, then the Ponder Craft, he won oh. it twice. Uh -huh. Then Manchester, he won Manchester. Wow. Yeah, then another one. Then the school's championship, he won it again. And how's he doing um, education-wise? Education-wise, he's doing okay, but yeah, he's finding it a bit tough. Uh -huh. Because it's like he skipped some a grade. Was he left here doing grade seven? Then he went there. The stuff was a bit different. Yeah. But he's coping up. Oh, nice one. Yeah. And he's got a young sibling coming up in his footsteps. Yeah, his sister. Yes, the sister is just following. Natasha? Natasha, she's just doing the same as what Ryan did. <laughs> there's no, no escape from you, eh? Yeah, there's no escape. And yes. then Michelle? Michelle, yes, she's getting the story. Uh -huh. But now he's trying to concentrate on Natasha. If she gets through, yeah. then we take Michelle as well. Nice, then young Brian. Yes, then... No escape, no, no excuse. No escape, yeah, that's the last issue.
she's dead. Zimbabwean heat killed him. One thing I like doing when I come back to Zimbabwe recently is collecting junk. Sus these pieces here. Old cans, rusty pieces of tin, metal, squashed, flat. Years and years of just lying in the dirt. Mm, check. No. You do you, let me do me. Let me go mild by myself. Once creativity starts to come out of you, don't bottle it up. Don't let the voices, negative voices, seal your creativity inside. It wants to come out, let it, let it grow. If it itches away, it's gonna tap away and tap away and tap away at your subconscious mind and come out in I don't know it's gonna come out in different ways negative ways if you don't there's a saying uh, that says a musician must make music an artist must make art a writer must write if they are to be at peace with themselves do you get that? Here's another piece. What is that? It's metal or cloth. Metal. Here we go. Check it. So maybe I won't use all the pieces. Maybe some of them I'll throw away. Maybe I'll come to my senses and say, hey, what the hell am I doing? But you gotta, you gotta listen to that inner voice that's trying to speak to you take that first step forward. The UN once ranked Zimbabwe as having one of Africa's best education systems, but after the free basic education policy ended in the 1990s, state schools have become more costly. Parents desperate to get any kind of education for their children are enrolling them in unregistered schools such as these. And in this economic crisis, these institutions have mushroomed in backyards and in homes. These are schools formed by teachers and ordinary people plugging a gap in the market. They offer greater flexibility on payment and are not as strict on attendance or dress code or as overcrowded. This school charges 60 Zimbabwe dollars or three US dollars a month. But even then, parents are struggling to pay, and enrollment has dropped by a third compared to last year. Some are failing to pay. Some bring 20 this week, 15 this week, until they think they, they pay the month. This education has its drawbacks. No desks and only one textbook for the teacher. Fees at most state schools more than doubled this year, and now cost between 30 to 700 US dollars a year. Meanwhile, household monthly incomes have fallen from 68 US dollars in 2018 to 44 dollars in 2019. During this time, 20,000 children have dropped out of primary school. As food prices have risen, parents have cut spending on education by a third. Elizabeth Chibanda's food vending business collapsed due to the rising cost of supplies. She could no longer afford school fees. Her eight-year-old daughter has been sent away to live with her grandmother and her son couldn't begin first grade this year. She's doing nothing there, but I was ashamed. It's obvious to all she should be in school. With my son, I pretend he is not school age yet. Zimbabwe's youth literacy dropped 5% between 1992 and 2014. That was compounded by a shortage of schools, about 2,000 according to a government report. The government is now seeking partners to help build more facilities and has warned that it's illegal to turn children away for non-payment of fees. Meanwhile, the legacy and strides made in the years after independence are slowly and visibly being eroded.
You think it will be sweet? I think so. Let's try it. Let's see. It's okay. And take your half. Half. Right. Let's punish. Let's, let's, let's try to see if it's, if it's sweet. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? It's Bess. Yes, who? It's Bess. Bess? Yeah. Who's Bess? <laughs> it's a moat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.